Well, I'm known for good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Amen. I just want to greet everybody and let you know that this is morning, and it's almost noon, but it's good. This is the day the Lord has made, and I will be glad and rejoice <coughs> therein. God, we praise you. We worship you. I want to greet everyone out there in Facebook land and video land, YouTube land, and all those that are here worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ together with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we just praise you. In the middle of the night there, our night, it was the day of India. We've got another invitation, and I, I have seen that. I haven't responded to it for us to be on Facebook and to, to open up other churches and other avenues for us to preach the gospel in India. We're grateful. We're thankful. We want to reach as many people as we can with this gospel of power. I do believe that that is like a sugar-coated candy stick that the Lord gave me is the Holy Ghost and fire. It's going to take the Holy Ghost. It's going to take, really, an humbling of ourselves, crying out to God, a prayer meeting. If you're not feeling really good with the challenges, the challenges of this earth and this world and what's going on, if your mind is somewhere else, if it's on yourself, it's on, on what's going on with the, the politics or such, you need to get your mind, I need to get my mind on Jesus. Amen? Jesus is my healer. It's good to have Kathy here today. JR, amen. Welcome, amen. welcome, welcome. Amen. And always, amen. Sister Mary, Lord, we praise you. We worship you, Jesus. We just want to pray for those that may have transitions, challenges, and changes in your life. There's some here that may have, uh, with COVID and with all these, even new ownership, different things taking over, some businesses have closed, some have reopened and such. Our granddaughter, we pray for, for her, uh, Josh and Julia, for the success of their opening of their business. But then there's others, and this is a scary time for anyone to open a business or make changes. And then there's transitions and jobs. We just wanna pray for Melvin. Amen, we love you, Sister Melvin. Amen. We love you very much, and we just pray, God, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We miss you. We love you. And all of those in the Philippines, we love you, too. We're preaching the gospel around the world from our living room. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We pray for Shannon, for your husband, Scott. We had a tough week today, with, uh, this week. Amen. Lots of pain. And we just want to give praise reports, believing and trusting in God. Amen. Sister Kathy is here. She doesn't have braces on. Amen. We're rejoicing in that. We're thanking God. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. God for Joe. And we pray for Joe Late in uh, Langley uh, or somewhere there in BC, British Columbia. British Columbia, Canada. He and his wife had COVID like my husband and I, and they kind of helped one another. But boy, I tell you, he still needs strength. We pray for them. Amen. We pray for Alex. Amen. And Dawn. Dawn and many, 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 many others. Amen. And I have special friends in my life that I really have a, a heavy burden for. That I know it's challenging times today. There's a lot of things that people are facing. But I want you to know is we can't look to others, but we look, we've got to look to God. We can't compare ourselves to others. Amen. Amen. And I've been reading about Job, and I, I'll say that for a little bit later, but you know, we have God's breath within us. We have seasons and times. But I'm telling you, every season and every time, we must look to God and know that we got to grow through these times. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So when I woke up this morning, I stayed on Jesus. When I woke up this morning, I Stay on 
uh, choo-choo train is like, gotta make it, gotta make it, gotta make it. Come on, get that gotta make it inside of you. Get that faith operating. Woo! <laughs> I know I'm nuts. I know I'm silly, but that's okay. Amen, because I gotta make it, gotta make it. I'm gonna make it. You Christ it. Jesus who strengthens me. You Amen. Made it. I'm 68 years old now. Yeah. This year I'll be 69, so we're moving on up. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you know what? I plan on to get younger. Amen. Yes, even act younger. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mountain, you got to move. Mountain, you got to move. I speak right now in the name of Jesus. I made up my mind. Mountain, you gotta move these walls. You gotta move these walls. You gotta move. I speak right now in the name of Jesus. I made up my mind and I'm going through. Mountain, you gotta move. Mountain, you gotta move. Oh, you gotta move. How have you made up your mind? that you're going through. I'm telling you, God is faithful. He's faithful. And everyone that will just give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, your whole heart, your soul, your being, your mind, your will, your emotions, everything, God will work for us. God is not working for us like, like we are his boss. No, no, no. I'm saying God works. Amen? If we yeah. surrender and we submit and we yield to the boss. We, too many people around the earth and the world, they're trying to boss God around and they're trying to change the word of God to fit their, their issues, their problems, their lives and what they want to do. Come on, in their life. Around their loves and center around them. I'm telling you, the word of God centers around Jesus Christ is lifted up. That he rules, he reigns, amen? We lift him up. Oh, lift Jesus higher. Lift Jesus higher. Lift him up for the world to see. He said it fine. He lifted up from the earth. I will draw all men unto me. Lift Jesus higher. Lift Jesus higher. Lift him up for the world to see. He said it fine. He lifted up from the earth. I will draw all men. To me. Well, now I've got a river of light flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, set the captives free. I've got a river of light flowing out of me. Spring up away within my soul. Spring up away and make me whole. Strengthens me. Mountains have to move. 
Malcolm's have to move. Malcolm's have to move when people pray. And I love to praise him. centers around the cross. Amen. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is cast all your cares upon him. And it says in the word of God that take up thy cross and follow after me. And I love that song. Take up thy cross and follow me. I hear the master calling. Amen. How many of you hear the master calling in Jesus name? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did, did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred hand for such a work as I? Oh, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the Was it for crime that I had done? He groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. Oh, at the cross, at the cross, where I burned so light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. Well, might the sun in darkness, well, might the sun in darkness hide and shut his glories in when Christ the mighty maker died for men, the creature's sin. Oh, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. At the cross, at 
the cross where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Oh, at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled choice through Jesus Christ. Amen. That he reigns in our life. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you have the Lord reigns, Richard, far and near? Hear the call. Oh, yeah. Amen. Do you have that one? Yes, call far and near. Far and near. Far Hallelujah. Near. Say it loud.
nations come, nations come to Jesus. Oh, celebrate. Oh, we're going to celebrate what God has done. There's a call for revival. Oh, say it loud. Oh, say it loud. Say it strong. Oh, say it strong. Great is 
Who's going to get into the Word of God? I was just thinking, there is not one problem too big. Not one challenge too big. No issue that God hasn't already got a, an answer. And He solved solved all these things. Because all through these years, there's people that has already gone through what we've gone through. Amen? They've been through floods. They've been through fires. They've been through uh, challenges with animals like uh, lions lions and the lion den, you know, Daniel. There has been so many examples. And our God delivered them out of all of our troubles. God will deliver us if we will go to him. Amen? But there needs through the breaking and the crushing we discover God's love. How many of you know through the breaking and the crushing we can discover God's love. Hallelujah. I don't know it either, but I know Mike Murdoch saying, through the break, breaking and the crushing, we discovered the love of God. I am just ablating here today. I'm just happy. I'm excited. I mean, I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. <laughs> just me and my Lord. How about you? Yeah. Are you in his presence? Oh, Yea, saith the Lord, I am moving by my spirit. He says, the Lord is saying unto his people, just rejoice in me, because look up, my redemption is very, very near. I'm coming soon. I'm coming soon. I'm coming for my people that are called by my name. The only thing that holds me back is there's many that are not yet ready. There's many, there's many that think you're ready. They think that you're doing my will. But I'm asking for your heart. I want the things that you really love. That I become more and greater and bigger. And that I become your first love. I want to become your everything. I want to become your all and all. And you will see. Amen. You will see the enemy withdraw. <laughs> you will see him take his tail and tuck it between his legs and run. Hallelujah. Because he fears that great I am, the Almighty, who I am, saith the Lord. He fears me. And he knows that he's in doom and gloom. And he's trying to bring you there. He's trying to take over the world. And he's trying to, to, to represent himself as the Christ. The anointed one, the anointing. He's trying to rule and reign. He's called the Antichrist. Be aware. Be aware and wake up. Wake up. Wake up. My children, my children, I am still requiring my word. I'm still requiring a relationship of walking with me. I am giving you the power. I am giving you my spirit. And I am pouring it out upon those that will seek, those that will ask and knock. Prepare ye the way. Prepare because I'm coming. Do not be deceived. Amen. Do not be deceived. Hallelujah. For I have given you that mystery. And it is my power. It is my spirit. And you may not understand it. But when you begin to, to let it operate through you. You will experience its power. Its signs and its wonders. And you the light. My light will come upon you. And you will do my exploits. Amen. Oh, I'll take the woe is me out of you. I will take the woe and the rebellion and the resistance out of you. And you will look up to me and you will see me as your Savior, your Redeemer, as your Lord, your Creator, your Maker. And my name is Jesus. And you will use that name to cast out demons and devils. Amen. You shall see my exploits. You will see change lives radically transform by my power. Receive. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of my heart. We're changing the order of our worship now. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see See you. 
States of America. My husband's got the words there. Amen. But that's okay. I'm going to move right on. Amen. Into some more worship here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Faithful one, you are so unchanging, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
dignified so to speak <laughs> didn't I Mary I told you that and the Lord he, he granted my request but you know what I really enjoy jumping up and down I really enjoy flailing my arms all around I love it I love it this is who I really really am amen I'm not trying to get your attention hallelujah Jesus we're right here standing in the need of prayer amen we've got challenges we've got issues and things in this world and this life but I'm letting them just go down the river. Come on. Hello. With all the different ticks and toxins, <laughs> it's not bothering us. There's, hallelujah, praise God, praise God. Well, I'm gonna take off my furs, amen. For all of you in the north, amen, I still love to, to, to wear my furs, amen. Hallelujah, yeah. I think of you. I miss you guys. I love you guys. Amen. And as you know, the presence of God is real. Amen. But I love the people here because God sent us here. And uh, it's, these are new faces to us. Amen. And all people around the world. Amen. I, you know what? I just took care of that tick. There yeah, you go. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. The Lord just told me what to do. Amen. That tick just talked yeah. off. Yeah. Amen. There you go. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Glory, if you could know. I just don't know how to express it, but I feel so much joy inside of me. I have so much peace inside of me. I have so much of the power of God, the Spirit of God. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. It is so glorious. It's so awesome. And 
And if you're going through anything, just give it to God. Quit falling, feeling sorry for yourself. That's flesh, that's self. There's somebody somewhere on this earth that has it worse off than you. Many of you have no idea what I battle and what I go through every day. Amen. But I want you to know, because I sing the praises of God and I lift up the name of Jesus and I love him and he's so wonderful. And when I'm in the presence of God, it's awesome. I don't have a problem with God, with Jesus, and his and worshiping him, and in his presence is awesome. But sometimes people have a problem with me being too much. But you know what? I like, I like too much, if this is too much. It's not too much for me. Do you understand? I want more and more of Jesus. Because I feel as though I can't get out and release what I feel inside. There's no words. There's no words to describe the goodness of my Lord. There's no words. There's no actions. There's nothing except give it in my life and give it in my heart and give it in my all. He's real. He's real. He's real. And you know it's going to be worth it all when we see Jesus. Amen. We're going to see him face to face. Oh, I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, you're wonderful. Holy Ghost, you're wonderful. A wind blowing strong, blowing from heaven. Hallelujah. Blood and fire, we call upon your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, you're wonderful. A wind blowing strong, blowing from heaven. Holy Ghost, you're wonderful. Holy Ghost, a wind blowing strong. Lord, we need the rain. 
rain, Lord. We need the latter rain right now, Lord. We need the rain, Lord. We need the rain, Lord. We need the latter rain. I'm so hungry for a move of God. Hallelujah. I'm so hungry, Lord, for you. Oh, Lord Jesus, come down, Lord, in a mighty way. Hallelujah. His heart's turned turn to him. God will not deny you as you call upon him. He said, just ask. Ask of me, and I will give you a drink. Amen. Of water. He will cool your parched tongue. He will set you free. If you have an addiction right now, just give it to God. Give it with your whole heart. Lay down those things that are your master, that you are serving. Just lift up your hearts to heaven. Lift up your hands to praise the Lord. Send down the rain, Lord. Send down the rain, Lord. Send down the latter rain. Send down the rain, Lord. Send down the rain, Lord. Send down the latter rain. rain. If I were not playing this music right now, I'd be out there dancing for the Lord Jesus Christ. Shouting and running. I couldn't be still. Oh, we need the rain, Lord. We need the rain, Lord. We need the latter rain. We need your rain, Lord. We need your rain, Lord. We need your latter rain. Oh, pour out the Spirit. Pour out your Spirit. Pour out the Holy Ghost. We'll speak in tongues. Cast out demons. Pour out your latter rain. Mark 16, 15 through 20 says that if you believe, amen, these signs are going to follow you that believe. You believers, you're going to speak with new tongues. You're going to cast out demons. You're going to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Send us the ladder. He said he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh, according to Joel 2.28. And then on the day of Pentecost, when it was fully come, suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Amen. And there assembled 120 of them. They were hungry. They were waiting. And they began to speak in tongues as the spirit of God gave them the ability, the utterance. The Holy Ghost come up out of their belly. As, and according to John, he said that that it will give you rivers of new life and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. There was a pastor and a preacher who once used to hate it when I say out of your belly. They said, no, no, and they'd manifest and scream, not out of your belly, not out of your belly. But I'm telling you, they did experience the baptism of the Holy Ghost and it come forth out of their innermost being. It came out of their belly. Amen. Out of the inward man, which is the Holy Spirit, God within us. Hallelujah. Let him have his way, Lord. Let him have his way, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Have thy own way, Lord. Have thy own way. Thou Oh, 
yes, I see that pain. God sees your loneliness. God sees, amen, every time that you cry out to him and say, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. Are you willing? And will you be obedient to give him your heart? That's all he asks for. He's not asking something too difficult. He's not asking something that you cannot do. You can through him, through Christ. God will give you the power. He, he's already enabled you, equipped you. He's given you the word. And his Holy Spirit will fill you with power from on high. According to Acts 1, 4, 1, and 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Amen? You will be a witness of how God has delivered you and set you free. Amen? Healing your bodies, miraculous miracles, or he can also make you completely whole. Amen? Where you were once lonely, lonesome, and crying out, and not wanting to live, God will put a purpose, his purpose, his plan in your life to keep you here on this earth. Not because he's unjust or mean, no. Because he needs us. He doesn't have to have us. He'll use someone else. And if we say no, he'll go to another. Amen? I don't want somebody else doing my job. Even the rocks and the mountains, if necessary, they would cry out and praise God. God created you and I to praise him and to worship him and to love him. I don't want a rock doing my job. Do you? I don't want a mountain doing my job. I want to be... Oh, yes, climb up into that mountain of holiness, of praise and adoration to seek the Lord while he may be found. Seek him today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the visitation of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is visiting the earth around the world today. And he's saying, will you serve me? Will you love me? Oh, will you read my word? Will you come in relationship and come to know me? Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm calling you. I'm calling you. The Lord says, I'm calling you. God is speaking loud and clear. He's actually, I remember Brother J.D. Dansby, one of my pastors from Modesto, Hallelujah, California. He used to say, and his story was, he was in Japan or somewhere in the service. And God, if, if it's you, and you told me to go and call me somewhere, like to Japan or China or somewhere, you'd have to scream. You'd have to holler. You'd have to yell. And then I would answer it, and I would go, kicking and screaming and hollering and yelling, but I'd go, I'd be obedient. But Lord, I'm telling you, he's, he's screaming. <laughs> he's, he's really speaking loudly. There's a lot of intercessors that are interceding. Amen. For the children of the Lord, for the church to become the church. Let the church be the church. Amen. Oh, let the people rejoice. A church triumphant. He's alive, we're alive and well. Let the church be the church. That's what God is crying to us. Be my people. Be who you say that you are. I'm yours and you are mine. Have relationship and walk with me. Talk with me. And let my presence come upon you. Let me fill you with my glory. With my power. With my anointing. Oh, he's coming. He's coming. Look up. Look up to Jesus. Be encouraged today. Get your eyes on Jesus. Get your eyes on Jesus. Get your eyes on Jesus. Let him have his way. Many of you that's not been in services with me, I'll just take off and sing a song of the Lord. Just just whatever God gives you. Amen. Just take off and, and sing your own song unto the Lord. It's called worship. It's called worship from your heart. Get your eyes on Jesus. Get your eyes on Jesus. Get your eyes on Jesus. And let him have his way. Let the Lord do whatever he wants to do. Say yes. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your ways. Oh, I'll say yes, yes, Lord, yes, to and obey when the Spirit speaks to me with my whole heart. Yes, Lord, yes. Oh, I'll say yes.
yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes. Lord, yes. And my answer will be yes. And my answer will be yes. And my answer will be yes. Lord, yes. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. <laughs> my answer is yes, Lord, yes. Oh, I might kick, scream when he said, come back to California, come back to your home. After 25 years in the Arctic, man, it took me a trips down to that altar. On the floor, I fasted, I prayed, I wanted God to be wrong, I wanted my husband to be wrong, I wanted to stay. Hello. Well, you'd have thought, and everybody else would say, oh, it would be so easy to come back home. No, it wasn't. That was the hardest thing to do. Going was the easiest. And in the natural, everybody said, oh, that would be the hardest thing to ever do is to leave your homeland, your comfort land, and go to a foreign land, especially in the ice and gold, when you're used to the sunshine and the beach. Hello. But that was easy to obey God, to go and do and answer the call for souls, for souls, for souls, for people. Amen. How many of you want to be sold out and radical for Jesus? I do, I do, I do. I want to. I so want to, God. I can't force. I can't make. I can't change a heart. I can't heal a body. Amen. I can't change a mind. I can't cause you to stop doing this or start doing that. God can't either. But he can talk to you and we can preach the word and we can make it look so enticing and so wonderful and so salty. We can create thirst, amen, and hunger because it really, 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 really is real. God is real. Jesus is real. Heaven is real. And I don't want to go to hell. But I want to see my Jesus more than anything else and I focus on Jesus. I'm not afraid of going to hell because I have the promise of my Savior, the one who died for me, the one that loves me. I walk in relationship with him every day through the cool of the garden. Amen. I was making a flower arrangement. I love to design and make flower arrangements. And yesterday, I bought flowers and I thought it would be in more than enough in a big vase, but yet I needed more. And the Lord said, go out to your garden I gave you. And I went out to my garden with some snippers and some clippers and I began to snip and cut camellias and, and beautiful flowers, amen, and greens to fill and finish up what that vase needed. Amen. I walk in the garden alone. How many of you know? Let me walk with you, Jesus. Let me walk with you, Jesus. I know I'm full of a repertoire of thousands of songs, and, and they're just coming to me and coming to me, and I could sit here all day and all night. I really, really, really could. <laughs> but I know some of you can't and wouldn't understand that. So i got to condense it to let you know that God is really real. I'm going to be turning the service over. Okay, if I can't find the words. Like, yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We got a, a, a request, but I'll see if I can find the words because I can't if I don't have it. Unless I get the accordion and you have you have the words there out there? I can no. go get the accordion. No, no I don't. Okay. Hallelujah. All right. Someday go, for you, Caesar, I'm going to play the accordion, okay? And sing in Spanish. Amen. And uh, some people would say sing in Mexican. Sing in Mexico. No, sing in Spanish. Amen. I love the Mexican people. We love you, Brother Caesar. Amen. Glad you're watching. We want to come back. We want to see you again. Amen. You're welcome here. Amen. Hallelujah. We uh, 
met friends, amen, and we uh, got to witness to people, amen, while we were there. That was what our job was all about. Walk the beach, yes, and enjoy and get strength. We're strengthened. Hello. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, could, I walked, we walked four miles one day, and that was the first day on the beach, two miles there and two miles back, and there approximately, because I went to the other side and back. And I was not, I didn't sit down <clears throat> except to, to get a, a, a smoothie, a fruit juice, amen, in town in La Cruz, the cross, amen, La Cruz, amen, and it was beautiful, it was wonderful, fresh, 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 fresh fruit, ah, squeeze and however they do it, it's just so good, so good. We love Mexico, we love the people, amen, but I'm telling you, after COVID, God really touched us, and for me to go that far, and I was wanting to run, I had energy, and I'm praying for you, Brother Late, Brother Joe Late and Violet, Amen. Strengthen right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I know you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. And as you're watching this right now, and if not, you're going to watch it later, and you're going to be touched by the power of God. Time is of nothing for the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone Amen. raise your hands up, and anybody that Thank needs a healing Lord. touch, your body needs strengthened. You need encouragement for all of those that need to be encouraged and that battle of oppression, depression, death, and yes. darkness. And, and addictions go mm -hmm. right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. To those that have hate and those that have unforgiveness and bitterness. To those that are withholding the love that you have in your heart. And you're wanting to hurt others by being absent and away. And maybe you're deceived and maybe you don't even know what you're doing. I pray the light will come into you children and into grandchildren and other people. That you will see the light and the love and the power and the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ. How good it is. And that any sin issues will be dealt with. You'll give the sin to Jesus. Anger, hatred, resentment, bitterness, adultery, fornication, homosexuality. Come on, all kinds of evil and wickedness. Whatever the Bible says is sin is sin. Amen? And we need to turn to the light. We need to turn to Jesus and be saved right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Richard, yeah. we'll turn it over to you. You need to check, make sure my head's not cut off here. Sometimes you guys will have to excuse us because between uh, multitasking, uh, equipment failure, and internet, it sometimes gets weak. We have various problems, but you know, our God's still able to get the word out the way it's supposed to be and to allow God to have his way in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. A couple of little comments. We do want to do a shout out to Brother Caesar in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Uh, watches our services faithfully every week. And we just want to know that we love you, brother. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The song I was going to have my wife sing, uh, she sang it many times in the past. It's called Fuego, Fuego. But I'm not going to try to butcher it up by singing it, so that's okay. Thank you, Lord. Also, the other songs that my wife was singing in the beginning called, from, uh, written by Mike Murdoch. Years ago, Mike Murdoch sent my wife and I a cassette tape, and he did this for um, uh, various people in, uh, that were connected with him. But it was a tape of songs that he, never, he wrote, but he never actually published them. One of them is called, I Fell in Love with the King. Thank you, Jesus. And mountains, you've got to move. And my wife actually taught a lot of those songs to the people up in the north. Uh, Esther, those of you that are watching right now, uh, we know you know those songs. Praise God. So thank you, Jesus. Anyways, so we wanted you to know. Okay, we are going to take an opportunity here to uh, talk about tithes and offerings for just a moment. Because there's a lot of you out there, the people that were a part of our church, you know the teaching simply because of the fact that you spent so much time with us, you couldn't help but hear it. And because we are online, and because many of you already have a home church, okay, we uh, have not spoken as much about it maybe as we should. But I want you to understand this. First of all, if you have a local church, even if you are a part of them online, and, but that is your church you go to when they are open, your tithes belong in your local church. 
You don't send them to some evangelist that's offering uh, uh, a Bible or other gift items for a donation. Uh, you don't send your tithes in to buy a Bible. Simple as that. That money belongs to God. And I want to turn, first of all, to Matthew, uh, Matthew right? Malachi chapter 3. And I'm going to share this with you just for a brief moment. Hallelujah, Ma uh, Malachi. One preacher said one time, he says, turn to the book of Malachi. I guess maybe he was an Italian preacher. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Now, uh, Malachi is the very last book in the Bible. New t Old Testament, not the whole Bible, the Old Testament. Okay, chapter 3. I'm going to read this for just a minute, and I want you to see. Okay? And, uh, you know, I want you to make sure we understand something. A lot of people say, well, that's Old Testament. God don't have anything to do with the Old Testament. Well, if you didn't have an Old Testament, you wouldn't have a New Testament. Simple as that. Okay? And nowhere in the Bible are you going to see where God said, don't tithe anymore. I mean, the book of Psalms and many, many others talk about prayer. So, guess what? That doesn't mean it's over with. We keep praying. We keep fasting, although fasting is not a topic that is um, done in the New Testament, in the writings of the New Testament, but it was a part of their lifestyle already. So Jesus didn't have to go back through it. He just said, these kind only come out by much prayer and fasting and a few other places that they talk about. Read the book of Hebrews, especially around chapters 3, 4, and 5, and they will talk about the Old Testament Quite a bit. I believe Apostle Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. If you don't uh, agree with me, that's okay. I'll forgive you. But I want you to see this in Malachi chapter 3. The Bible says this here. We're going to start off here in verse number. I want to back up because I want to get the right spot here. Thank you, Lord. Let's say here verse number 6. For I am the Lord. I change not. Ooh. He said, I change not. I want to make sure we understand this. Yes, there was a change from the Old Testament to the New Testament, but God says, my character, my power, my deeds, my love in the Old Testament did not change. In fact, Jesus said it this way here. He said, I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill it. Technically, what he's saying there and other places, he's saying that I came to fulfill the law, so through me, you fulfill the law. Okay? He, and he said, I want to explain something to you. The Bible says, Thou shalt not murder in the Old Testament. That means you're not to kill somebody. All right? Simple as that. The New Testament says if you even think it in your heart, you've already committed it. One said you have to do the deed. The other one says you have to just want to do the deed. Violates the law of God. Simple as that. We are called to a higher level. And that should be in every area of our life, not just what we see in the Old Testament. But the Old Testament is God's will reveal. I mean, uh, concealed, and it is, a New Testament is God's will, I hear my wife in the background, revealed. Okay, so don't let her distract you. Uh, I'll be distracted, but that's okay. All right, verse number six says, I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, the sons of Jacob are not consumed. He says, even from the days of your father's, you are gone away from my ordinances. Now, an ordinance is basically what God is saying. This, these are my rules. This is the way it's supposed to go. And we're not necessarily talking about the Ten Commandments. We're talking about all the other things. God says, this is the way you're supposed to act. These are the things you're supposed to do. And he says, even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Thank you, Jesus. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you said, wherein shall we return? Hold on a second. Turn that down. We got a, 
a fireplace with a fan on it, and that fan many times will echo on our recording, so I'm asking my wife to turn that down. Thank you, Lord. He says, wherein shall we return? Now, I think it's interesting, and in fact, I've been doing a study on this area, uh, <coughs> excuse me, of how many times people have questioned God. I'm doing a study on fasting, and the very first part of Isaiah 58, what does it say? Hey, we fasted just like you want. Why haven't you answered us? Everybody always wants to put the blame on God. God says, you have stepped away from my ways. And he says, return. And he says, why should we have to return to you? He says, you've gone away from my ordinances. You have not kept them. He says, return to me. And I will return to you. Simple as that. But you said, wherein, how, first of all, how, and implied in that is, why should we have to return? And then God says this, will a man rob God? Hello, will a man rob God? Yet yeah, you've robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed you? How did we rob you, God? God saying, this is what you're saying. How did we rob you, God? And God said, in your tithes and your offerings. See, it's two different things. Your tithes and your offerings. And he says, you are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now, I want to make sure we understand something here. God's not saying he's going to take a demon and put it upon you. That kind of a curse. God's not going to do a magic potion and speak that way over you. In fact, the root word for the word curse in the Old Testament is confusion. Confusion. Now I want to make sure we understand this. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you can even be filled with the Holy Ghost, but you have confusion working in your life, I believe one of the first things you should do is say, God, am I? And I'm asking you, are you taking care of your tithes, that 10%, and your offerings before the Lord. If you are not, that is one of the root, and I believe this, one of the root problems with confusion in the church today, because they are not obeying the ordinance of God. They're not obeying the will of God. They are not obeying. God does it. I was listening to uh, um, a preacher on, on uh, YouTube this morning, in fact, and he was talking about how this, and I agree, okay? God doesn't need your money. Hello. I remember years ago up in Canada, we had an evangelist that had come up and God was doing so many miracles. And I brought him actually down to California. I took him to, introduced him to a church in San Francisco. And for a number of years after that, he'd come and do three and four week crusades for them. We went and spent a number of weeks in uh, Lehigh, Utah, doing outdoor services and indoor services. Saw many signs, wonders, and miracles, but I'm not going to preach about that right now. But what, I, what it is, is he had one of the things I did in joining the team, and I was doing a lot of the videotaping. I've still got a lot of the services out in the garage there. But uh, he would have me receive the offering. And oh man, he used to get so nervous because I would get it before the people. And I would say, first thing I want you to understand is God doesn't need your money. And he'd go, oh no, he'd be in the back. No, 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 don't go there, don't go there. <laughs> and I said, what he needs is your obedience. He needs you to obey first and foremost. The tithe is the very first foundation thing of all giving in your life. And then you need to obey God in offerings. And then there's another third part in benevolence, but that's another story. Okay? In fact, benevolence means giving and giving to the poor, etc., etc. And God says in the book of Proverbs, he says, when you see these people that are down and out and suffering, he says, lend to the Lord and he shall repay you. So if I say if I say to Jr. Hey Jr. Let me uh, let me ten bucks. He gives me ten bucks, and I repay him. How much do I generally give him? Ten bucks. I repay him. 
You see? And there's a lot of people who are giving their tithes to that level, and they wonder why they're not prospering. Instead, what are they doing? They are just receiving back from the Lord what they lent to him. Okay? Offerings is, a, is a, another part, but all we're going to talk about is the tithing part right now. Excuse <coughs> me. The Bible says here, he says, you are cursed with a curse. You have confusion in your life. And look at where you're putting your seeds. Where are you putting your faith? You know, one of the greatest tests of faith in a person's life is to obey God because God said so, not because of what you get out of it. Now, we don't serve God for what we get out of it. I mean, of course, we get saved, yes. But we don't serve God for what we get out of it. We do it for the, out of the love and obedience to his word. But you know something? God has rewards. Amen. All right? Sixth chapter of Hebrews says that it is impossible to please God without faith. Because you must first of all believe that he is, and you must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And if you're diligently seeking him, you are going to obey his word. You see? All right? And he says here, he says, bring ye all of your tithes, verse 10. He said, you, bring your tithes into the storehouse. Well, what's the storehouse? That's the place that you are getting fed the word of God. All right? That's why I say, your tithes belong in your local church. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And he says it this way. You bring your tithes into the storehouse so that there may be meat in my house. There's a twofold part there. Do you know in the Old Testament, when they would bring offerings to the temple, God had prescribed a certain amount of that offering went to be food and provision for the priests. Another portion of that went to feed the people during the feasts. This is why they could feed all of Jerusalem, because they would slaughter 120,000 cattle or whatever. And that uh, portion of that went for these feasts. And then the third part, hello, the third part is burnt as an offering unto God. You see what I'm saying? All right. Now, let's look at this further. He says, bring all your tithes into the storehouse so that there might be meat at my table. Well, first of all, if you have a building you're meeting in, there is rent, there are expenses. That's part of the provision of having a storehouse to be able to meet so that you can be fed the word of God. Well, right now, there's a lot of that that's going on with all the regulations, and there's a lot of people uh, that are uh, watching online. I know with us, we were already uh, left the church building that we were in before COVID hit, and we were having a few services, we thought maybe for a month, in our house while we're working on and we were negotiating for a new place to be able to move our church into a building. We had everything, almost everything, uh, uh, set up. And then in turn, COVID hit. And everything kind of backed away. You know the story. I'm not going to go into it. Uh, concerning the, what the COVID did to the churches. And then they started regrouping and pulling together. I mean, for the most part of the last year, we have had people meeting in our home. But, you know, we've only got a few, but that's the way God had it. But we are reaching thousands of people worldwide Amen. every week. We are providing meat for them. Now, again, if you have a local church that you call your church that is feeding you the word of God, then you need to tithe. If you're not tithing there and you don't have a local church, then you still need to tithe. This is God's way of taking care of things. But the second part is, he says, okay, I'm going to read it again here. Verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my, my house or at my table. Same thing. And prove, one of the few times you hear God say this, he says, put me to the test. Prove me now, herewith saith the Lord. Prove this, 
that if I will not, in other words, I want you to prove it differently. He said, you bring your tithes into the storehouse and by faith, believe me, believing God, trusting that what God says he's going to do. He said, you tithe and I am going to open up a window of heaven and I'm going to pour you out a blessing that you do not have room enough to receive it. Amen. Okay, have you ever gone to a gas station? You put the put the nozzle into the pump, and you're standing there doing something else. And and of course, a lot of people use the automatic clicker. But sometimes we'll be standing there holding the gas, and all of a sudden the gas comes gushing out because it's so full it's overflowing. Yes. Well, that's what God says He will do. He will not only provide you a tank full, but it will overflow. All right, now there's a twofold meaning to this, and I make sure you understand when God starts revealing this, these kinds of things, it's important to pay attention to. God is going to open up the window of heaven, and he's going to pour out blessings upon you that you can't even handle. Amen. But then the second part is, you are the window of heaven. Because heaven, the kingdom of God, dwells within you. You didn't just get a little bit of Jesus, you got everything and in him dwells all the fullness of the godhead bodily that means you have jesus you have everything god has at his disposal this is why he says that he's already done it by his stripes you were healed well guess what i was healed way back then and when you stand on it but to the level that you actually stand on that word 30, 60, 100 fold, will decide how much you are going to live in it. Simple as that. Okay? Bring ye all your tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat at my house. And prove me, put me to the test, says the Lord, that if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out you a blessing, that there's not going to be room, uh, room enough to receive it. And there's another thing here. Now, I heard a preacher say, well, we don't do that anymore. Well, you know something? I think we need to do everything we can. Amen. As long as it's in the Word. God says one of the benefits, he's not going to decrease the benefits. All right? Just because we transferred over the New Testament, it's increased benefits everywhere around. And in verse 11 it says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Well, then why is the devil not rebuked? Because you're not believing it. You're not standing there doing it. Because if you believe that the devourer is rebuked, then you are going to speak it in Jesus' name. Where does God dwell? Within you, when you speak it. The Bible talks about blow the trumpets in Zion. You are the city of God. You are Zion. And when you speak the word of the Lord, you speak to thus saith the Lord, you are blowing the trumpet. That's strong words. Oh, I just got about 10 different sermons out of what I've said already. But I'm not going to go with it. Thank you, Jesus. That's how it works with me anyway. Okay, he's not going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. That means your, your car would normally break down at a certain time, but because of the blessings of God, he's going to keep it going. Okay, your provisions are coming and you're going to receive more. First of all, you're not going to get less, but God will provide for you overabundance. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And he says here, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Now, first time when I think of that, I think of the kids. God's not going to allow them to be destroyed. There are families who do not have their kids living with them. But you know something? The blessing of God on your life can still protect them, no matter what. You hear that? Yep. God can still preserve those children and bring the blessings of Abraham upon them. But you have to believe it. 30, 60, 100 fold. Yes, we believe. All right. And he says here, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. In other words, everything is going to work like clockwork for you. But you have to believe it. You have to act like it. Not just putting on a show. You have to live like it is happening and it will. Yeah. Speaking the word of the Lord, like the apostle said, I believe, therefore I speak. And that's what we've got to do. 
and all the nations are going to call you blessed, mm -hmm. for you shall be a delightful land. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And then verse 13, I'm going to have to go a little bit further. Verse 13 says, your words are stout against me. Basically, if you want to really be honest about it, that means God says you're slapping me in the face. And again, the people say, yeah, you say, well, what have we spoken so much against you? All you got to do is play the recorder back. Come on, there's none of us that are perfect in this. We all, but you know something? We all can work and do better by the Spirit of God that dwells within us. The more yielded you are to God, the more you're going to speak what God has to speak. Mm -hmm. And he says, you have said, okay? God says that your words are stout against me. They said, how? And he said, your words, you've said it's vain to serve God. That means empty. That means it doesn't do any good to tithe. I still have problems. Things are still falling apart. This has all happened. Why? Because you don't believe it's working. There are a lot of people who say, well, you know something? You should give to God and don't expect anything back. Well, you know something? That is against the nature of God. He said, if you diligently seek me, if you are doing what you're supposed to be doing, there are rewards. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. He says, and what profit is it? He said, you say it's empty. It is vain to serve me. He says, and you say, what profit is it that I've kept your ordinances? What good does it do? I tried tithing once and it didn't work. You know something? It isn't something you do just once. Do you know how many people, how many times you have gone to the altar and accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord because for some reason it didn't seem it was working. And then one day, smack, you are changed. One day. You know, I used to use this story all the time. Okay? And that story is like this. You can have two men, drinking buddies, both of them, drinking like mad. They come to the altar. They drink, they smoke, they do their pot, they do all of this carousing. You name it, they're doing it. Both of them, equally the same. One comes to the altar. They both come to the altar. They cry out to God. They give their life to Christ. They declare they're a new creature. One man is so dramatically changed Cigarettes are gone, alcohol is gone, his foul language is gone, on and on. And the other one, well, he might have gotten rid of the alcohol, but he's still holding on to all the other things. Why? Why? It's not because God didn't want to change you immediately. It is simply because of this. Hallelujah. Because they would not believe that he would do it. Do you realize it takes the same amount of anointing of God, the same amount of presence of God, the same amount of glory of God to save you as it is to deliver you from cigarettes, from alcohol, from all kinds of things, and it can change your life? It, it, it's that fast. It can be that fast. Well, why isn't it? Because your faith mechanism is 30, 60, 100 fold. And that's going to be the gauge as to how fast things are going to work in your life. I've heard people say, well, you know, uh, God uh, set up this car accident to put you at a place to where you would receive Christ. Yeah. No, he didn't. He used it. How many of you would wish cancer on your child no. so that they would be obedient? Uh-uh. That's no, not right. Yes. God would not do that either. But the devil and you and your 30, 60, 100 fold, if you're walking in the 30, that means you're walking out of God's will in 70. If you're walking in the 60, you're still walking in 40% in the world, in unbelief and doubt, fear, and all this other stuff. But when you start stepping into that hundredfold, all of a sudden there's going to be changes. Whoa, whoa, There'll be changes whoa. taking place all the way through. But you see, too many people, they're satisfied with living in the 10%, the 20%, the 30%, or whatever in between. And, you know, God gives me a goosebump, or God sometimes will do this. You ever ask yourself, you need $1,000, and you're praying so hard for it, and 500 bucks show us up, and you say, well, God, I need needed a thousand. I like the way Rodney Howard Brown says it. He says if it's not enough to meet the need it must be seed. And God's going to say are you going to do and obey me what I want you to do with this and if 
full provision is coming. Hallelujah. That's not a gimmick. That is reality. And that's where we have to be living. He says here, you said it is vain, it is empty to serve God. He said, you said, what profit is it that we have kept his ordinances? No matter what it is, even forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. That is an ordinance of God. He says, you want the blessings of God? Then follow this. And that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. We have humbled ourselves. Oh, mournfully. That means, uh, oh, I have cried out to God. I have cried out to God. Aren't I so humble? <laughs> yeah. I've been pouring out to God. Aren't I humble? Oh, I'm so proud of my humility. I can show it to you if you want to see it. Huh? Come on. That's the way it works. Come on. This is what happens in people's lives. They attempt by the flesh to obey God instead of getting into the spirit because it's easy. To obey God when you're led of the Spirit. That's right. But too many people, they start getting led of the Spirit and God starts providing. They start getting blessed. People start getting touched in this. It's like they don't actually say it this way. But what they're actually saying is, thank you, God. I'll take care of it from here. I've got the anointing now. Uh, I'll take care of it from here, Lord. <laughs> Instead of realizing without that anointing, you can't do anything. And he is the source and the provider. Simple as that. True. Okay. He says here, verse number 15. And now we call the proud happy. Hello. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. In other words, those wicked, understand, wicked is where we get our word wicker for a wicker basket. I'm not going to go into that story, so you're okay. All right. But what I am saying is this. When you are living a twisted life, you do not have a straight path in your life. Hallelujah. When you don't have a straight path in your life, you are being set up. Well, what am I being set up for? You're being set up by the enemy to destroy you. He wants to fizzle out. It's like having a, a brother, Kent. He's probably watching this right now up in Yellowknife. Uh, this guy got a little tiny pinhole slow leak in the tire of his car. And, and he was our delivery driver for our flower shop. And he, in turn, he'd say to us once in a while, uh, I'm going to be a little bit late doing this or that because I have to stop off. And there were very few places to do this. And I got to put some air in my tire. And after two or three times of saying this, I'd say, well, why is it it started out once a week you had to put air in your tire? And then it's once every four days. And then it's once every two days. Now it's once every day. What's going on? He says, I don't know. I just doesn't figure. I says, the hole is getting bigger. And sure enough, and I can't begin to tell you how many times he had to buy a new tire because he ruined the other one because he didn't take care of it when it was a pinhole leak. Same thing here. Same thing here. Come on. When you're not living, and I'm not accusing him of this was a, a simple natural sight, but I'm just saying here, when you are not living straight up, right, walking the narrow path with God, you're going to have pinhole leaks, and if you don't get them repaired, you're being set up to have to have a flat tire mm -hmm. in your life. Trouble. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, my wife just said that. Trouble. And God said, yay, they that tempt God are even delivered. Now, this doesn't mean you tempt God and God's going to deliver you. No, what it means is when you try to put God to the test, not the one about your tithes there, but God said, prove me. But we put God to the test. See how far we can go on that pinhole leak. You're going to be delivered up to more problems. You're going to be delivered up to more deception. You're going to be delivered up to all kinds of things that happen that shouldn't happen in your life because you have a policy here to ensure it won't happen if you walk by faith and trust God. Thank you, Lord. What a word. Then they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another. That's called fellowship. How many of you have Jesus in your heart? You claim Jesus is in your life. You might pray and read the Bible, but you are a hermit. 
You're by yourself. You don't talk to anybody. You don't pray with anybody. You don't have anything to do with anybody in the name of the Lord. Or you're so busy, and maybe not busy, but you uh, maybe you preach to people. Maybe you share the word of God with some people. But are you fellowshipping with people? That fellowship is extremely important. Yes, the Bible is. tells us we must gather together with like-minded people. Okay? And that's another thing all in itself. Okay? We need that fellowship. If it's not face-to-face, -face, at least by telephone. You know, and we use Facebook a lot for fellowship today, but that's pretty drab in so many ways because that's like a hermit who sticks his head out the door once in a while for a breath of fresh air. It's not going to do anything else. Now, I, just, I like that. Okay, uh, that term. Okay, it says that they that feared the Lord, they spoke often one to another, and the Lord heard it. Yes. When you are lifting up Jesus, when you are talking with one another, fellowshipping, you are partaking. It's actually a type of holy communion. Okay? John says it this way in one of his uh, epistles. He says in, in 1 John chapter 1, he says, we know Christ. We have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. All sin. Fellowship. That word fellowship is communion, koinonia. It's communion. We have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us. You know why? He says later, he says, confess your faults one to another. Confess means to agree with it. You got a problem. I agree you have a problem. Now, I also agree on the answer to that problem. And let's pray. Let's fast. Let's do what we got to do. And let's get this problem taken care of. Let's go to the throne of God. And see what God has to say. Let's go to the Word of God and see what God has to say about Amen. it. You see, that's what changes lives. Everybody needs somebody else. Not just a husband and wife. Not just your kids. You need other people. But it's the people that we choose that usually tear us down more than anything else. All right? Thank you, Lord. Then they that feared the Lord spoke one to another often. Often. Everybody say that. Often. often. That mean, doesn't mean once in a while. Often. And it says, often. and the Lord hearkened. He heard. And he didn't just hear. He responds to that. Thank you, Jesus. And he heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him. I wasn't going to go this far, but I just feel the pull of the Spirit of God. He says that God wrote a book of remembrance. This is not the book of life. This is not the book of deeds. But God wrote another book. It's called the book of remembrance. Not that God forgot. But he recorded it in all history. What you've been doing. And he says here, uh, a book of remembrance. And, he was, and it was written before him. For them that feared the Lord. In other words, it was written right there before God. That book of remembrance of those who are fulfilling fellowship with one another. And for those who are uh, allowing God to touch them and change them. Moving up the scale from 30 to 60 to 100. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Jesus. And that thought upon his name. Okay? They fellowship and they... Because of that fellowship, it started bringing their attention to the thing of God more and more and more. And guess what it said? It thought about his name. What's his name? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You know how in the world today, you can talk to anybody out there about God and they'll listen to you. You mentioned Jesus and now them's fighting words. You know why? Because the generic name God can apply to anything and everybody. Come on, come on. And he says here, I'm going to pull this up here so I can get a closer look at it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Verse 17. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. Whoa. When God says, when I make up my jewels, when I gather all my jewels together. Whoa. What does that sound like? Rapture. 
I'm gathering my jewels. God says, those whose names are in that book of remembrance, he says, I'm going to remember their name. I'm going to remember them. In the day that I gather my precious jewels together. Listen to this now. And I will spare them. This is where end time revelation, one day we'll get into some teaching about it. But God said, I will spare them from the tribulation of this world. Now, there's a lot of people who have a lot of ideas. And I'm, I'm not wanting to get doctrinal. I'm not telling you that you're not going to go to heaven or whatever the case. But I tell you what. There's a lot of people who think that seven years tribulation. Well, I don't know where that actually. There's going to be tribulation. Anybody who, especially if you're working in the oil industry right now, tribulation is coming. It's already here. You just lost a two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollar a year job on a lot of those pipelines they were talking about on the news. That's why I'm so smart about it. Okay, but here's what it goes. He says, "I will spare them." You are not going to have to go through things. Uh, you're going to be taken out of here. Listen here. Thank you, Lord. As a man serves his son that serves him. In other words, God is saying, because you are serving me as a son. S-O-N. Now, when you go into the New Testament, son can be a little baby. And then there is son, the word that's used for the son of God, which means a fully functioning, mature son. Okay? Past the bar mitzvah. That's what the bar mitzvah was designed as to signal you are now entering into that sonship. Okay? And Jesus says, if you look at me as the son, I will do all these things for you. And we'll be, that's another service. Okay? He says him, he says, he'll spare you as his mature child that serves him. Then shall you return. What does that sound like? In, in, in time theology, we are going to be raptured out of here. We're going to have the marriage supper of the Lamb, praise God. And yes, David, there'll be a lot of dishes to wash, so you'll have a job. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to have the marriage supper of the Lamb. We are going to have the, the, the judgment of Christ, the Bema Seat of Christ. One person said one time, I'm afraid just to get before the Bema Seat of Christ because he might send me to hell. No, that's the awards banquet. part of it. The Bema Seat of Christ is to issue out the trophies, the awards, the positions, the good things. You already made it. God says, I, this is where you receive your rewards. The Bible also refers to them as crowns that we're going to wind up laying back at the feet of Jesus. And he says here that we're going to return in the, in the theology of Daniel and some of the other places in the Bible besides the book of Revelation. We are going to be coming back with Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. And it says they're going to return. Thank you, Jesus. And they're going to discern or judge or tell the difference between the righteous and the wicked. We are going to judge angels, the Bible says. Not only that, but we're going to rule and reign with Christ. And you know, those that we're going to rule and reign over are those that didn't know Jesus. And we are going to be the judges. Because we won't have this carnal body to make a fleshly judgment. We will judge by the Spirit, period. But we are going to show the difference and tell the difference between good and bad, right and wrong. And he says, between him that serves God and him that serves him not. Now just think of that. Thank you, Lord. And I'm just going to read this just as a capital. For behold... The day comes that shall burn as an oven. Can you think of anything hotter than hell? Book of uh, Daniel, when they threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in that fiery furnace, they fired it up ten, uh, seven times hotter. So when they opened up the doors to throw them in, 
The flames came out and literally killed all of the soldiers that were there to put them in that furnace. And you know something? Hell is hotter than that. And he says the day is going to come when that oven is going to be fired up. It's going to be open. The door is going to be open. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. I didn't expect it. I had thought about it, but I just said, Lord, do you want me to go where and etc." And as we get going in the word, okay, there's one more scripture verse I want to talk about and then we'll finish up here. Thank you, Lord. I want you to see this for a moment. Turn with me in your Bibles. Thank you, Lord. I had it down there. Let me get it. Thank you, Lord. It's still there. Okay. Matthew chapter 10, verse number 30. I want you to see this. Okay? Because again, there are so many people today because they don't want to give. You know the people that are attacking quote-unquote prosperity preachers the most are the ones that aren't obeying God in their tithes and offerings. Or they are, but they are not reaping the benefits. They, we don't serve God for what we get. Well, let me just tell you something. The Bible says this here. We're going to back up to verse 29. Mark 10, 29. Jesus answered and said, Mark. Mark 10, 29. Jesus answered and said, Verily, when it's written in red, pay attention. He said, Verily I say to you, no man that has left or forsook or departed from his house, his brethren, his sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my sake and the gospels. Now that pretty much covers life. There's no man that has left all of these things for my sake, obeying God in other words. But he shall receive. Everybody say, receive. Receive. Oh, I'm supposed to serve God, but I don't expect to receive. Jesus said you are to receive. Think of that. Jesus said, he says, he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Oh, all of my rewards are in heaven. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, we worship you, Lord. He said, you shall receive them now in this time. 30, 60, 100 fold. This is, he says, 100 fold has been set aside for you. Well, then why don't I have it? Because you have to appropriate it by faith. In essence, you have to reach into the spirit realm and bring it down. Jesus said, by his stripes, you were already healed. That's what uh, it says in the epistles. By his stripes, you've already been healed. Well, then why do I feel sick? You have to reach in and get the medicine. <clears throat> First thing you do is take a good dose of the gospel. This is God's prescription for you. And you reach into glory and you appropriate whatever it is you have need of. It doesn't have to be sickness. It doesn't have to be poverty. God says, acknowledge me in all of your ways and I will give you the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Some things just take a little bit more pushing in because we've been programmed by the world. You can't do that. No man has served me by giving up everything. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to. My wife and I willingly went to the Canadian Arctic for those 25 years. Amen. Some people said, you didn't ask to go there, did you? No. We said, no. We just said, Lord, we'll go wherever you want. I proved that God had a sense of humor. Because he sent us to the Arctic. We had in mind Hawaii, Africa, someplace warm. But we went obeying God and stayed there for 25 years. I know people that have gone up that way because they said the same thing to God. And as soon as they got there, he says, I'm out of here. See what I'm saying? All right. And he says here that you should receive 100 fold. And I'm saying 30, 60, 100 fold as that example that it doesn't necessarily mean 100 that you're going to take it to yourself. 
that you can receive hundredfold now in this time. Say that, now in this time. No matter what the circumstances of the world are, no matter what our new president is doing, no matter what China is doing or Russia is doing, we are under a different covenant than them. And we do not live by their dictates. We live by the word of God and being led by the spirit of God. That's what it takes. Okay? He said, he shall receive a hundredfold now. In this time, houses, plural. Do you know how many people on the internet blast uh, preachers that have more than one house? Hello. Brethren, sisters, mothers, children, and lands <clears throat> with persecutions. And other <laughs> there are going to be bad mouthers around. Simple as that. There are going to be those. That, well, it didn't work for me. Well, then you did something wrong. It wasn't God's fault. And he says, with persecutions and in the world to come, eternal life. But many that are first now yes. shall be last. Yes. And the last shall be first. What's the difference between that? Who's walking by faith. Yes. Simple as that. We've gone without all these years when God says we shouldn't have had to. But now that we are. And then there are those who received the abundance of God and then became self-reliant on the blessings of God that they had already received. And they stepped out of the will of God and became a do-it-yourselfer. And in turn, what happens? They wound up losing the perpetual, that means the continual flow of the blessings of God in their life. And in turn, many times, they wind up losing mother, father, brother, sister, lands, etc., etc., because of that. That's an awesome word. It really is. Ephesians 3.20. We'll go there for just a sec. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm going to get there. There it is. Ephesians 3.20. Apostle Paul says, Now unto him. Who is him? Jesus. Jesus. Now unto him. That is able. Say that. He is able. God, I got a problem. You are able to deliver us. You are able to provide. You are able to save to the utmost. And you are able. You are able. But too many people say you are able, but they live like he's not able to take care of them. 30, 60, 100 fold. Now unto him that is able to do, guess what? Exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. He is able to do so much more. No matter what you ask of him, okay? Never ask of him. And if you have to start out, that word ask has got multiple meanings to it. Okay, it might be to beg. If you got to beg in order to start off this road, then you're going to have to do it. Do whatever you got to do to start moving. You beg if you got to. But we're going to get to that point. You know something? Jesus, this Greek word was never used of Jesus asking of God. The word ask for Jesus, when Jesus was asking the Father, was asking as an equal. Well, but he was God. Yeah, but he left everything that made him God in glory and came to earth as a man like you and I, filled with the same Holy Ghost as you and I. And he asked of God as an equal. Doesn't Philippians say that he didn't think it was wrong to be equal with God? Come on. And in turn. Now, I'm not saying equal with God and Almighty like that. But guess what? Jesus was the child of God, son of God. You're a son of God. You're a daughter of God. We are co-laborers with Christ. We walk in his presence, in his glory. We are filled with the same Holy Ghost that he is filled with. Thank you, Jesus. He says here that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly. That doesn't just mean a little bit more. Okay, above all that we are able to ask or think, according to the power that works in Jesus. 
That's the way a lot of people live. The word says, according to the power that works in, in us. us. Same power that worked in him. Yes. The difference is, he was totally hundredfold plus. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. He is perfect faith. Mm -hmm. And this is why we can say, and the Bible says that it, to every man was given the measure of faith. Yes. There's only one measure of faith, and that's mm -hmm. the faith of Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you're living off your own petty faith, then guess what? You are not living the way you should. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And then the last scripture verse I'm going to use for a second here. Actually, I already did. I want you to see this. Mighty God. Our God is able. The difference is, are you willing to let him be able? Are you willing to reach in? And appropriate. First of all, salvation. Sozo in the Greek language. It means saved, healed, and delivered. And every one of us, I don't care who you are, hearing my voice, every one of us have got something we need to be delivered of. There is, I'm not talking about demons. We need to be delivered from some attitudes. <coughs> we need to be delivered in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Rebecca, check the front door, please. Thank you, Lord. Thought I heard something there. Living, uh, preaching in your home, you do things a little bit differently once in a while. Thank you, Jesus. Open the door and look out there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But you see, it all starts with you becoming a child of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 6 says that when you hear the anointed word of God, that God supernaturally puts faith on the tip of your tongue. And when you declare Jesus Christ as Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead on the third day, that seed of faith on your tongue drops into your spirit. There is a flash of light and bam, you are pregnant with the life of God. You now have received you know, a baby, even in the very beginning, all of the DNA is there to take care of things. And that's what we do in Jesus' mighty name. Pray with me real quick, and then we're going to. And if you want, our phone number is 530-537-7425. It will be changing next month. Uh, but uh, right now, that's our number. Give us a call if you have a prayer request, and we'll pray with you. But let's just pray this. And if you mean this within your heart, God will change your life. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name for saving me. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord. And I acknowledge and believe that you raised him from the dead on the third day. Your word says that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord like that shall be saved, healed, and delivered. We just reach forth right now and we just pull it all in. Everything that God has is already now dwelling within me and we in turn are going to start walking by faith. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you today. Thank you for joining us. Give us a call. Like, comment, and share this. In Jesus' name, amen.